Close your eyes and watch your breath. Let it stay with the breath all the way in, all the way out, each breath as it comes and it goes. And watch out for the mind, because it'll stay for a while and then it'll decide it wants to go someplace else. And sometimes it makes the decision and you're just barely aware that it's decided it's all ready to go. Neuroscientists say that the brain makes decisions before we're aware of them. But that's what happens in an untrained mind. Things are buried down in many layers. You're aware of them only after the influence starts coming up through the layers. Whereas if you've been meditating, you begin to peel those layers away. And you can see sometimes that the mind has made a decision, then it pretends that it hasn't. It's like a dog we had. When the monks would have their evening, evening tonics, it would come up. And if we didn't share any with it, it would scratch your leg. And then you look down and it would look away, as if it hadn't just scratched your leg. And then look back up at you very imploringly. And this is the way it is with the mind. It does, makes these decisions, then pretends it didn't make the decision at all. Especially when you've made up your mind you want to do something good. And there's a part of the mind that says, no, I'd rather not. And so it gets together with its friends. They make the decision and then they hide out, waiting for you to be mindless, have a lapse of mindfulness at some point, and then they go. So you notice if you're meditating, you're with a breath, and all of a sudden you find yourself someplace else and you wonder what happened in the meantime, or your hood wings. But you have to be prepared the next time around. Watch for the signs. They're there. That the mind is ready to go. And be extra, extra in, intent on staying with the breath. Try to erase that decision to go. And you find after all that you begin to know your mind a lot better as soon as anything comes up in the mind you know. And that's when you're in a position where you can do something about it. So if you were, you're here to learn our own minds, so our minds are not a stranger to us. Because after all, as we live our lives, the mind is what creates the actions that then shape our lives. And it's like we're handing things over to a stranger. We want to make sure that we're in charge. We're the ones that are fully aware from the beginning of an intention all the way through its completion. And we know what we're doing. This is how the Buddha says your precepts become appealing to the noble ones. And at the same time they're conducive to concentration. They're appealing in the sense that you don't break them. But you're not so worried or obsessed over breaking them that you can't get the mind to settle down. If you're confident in your intentions, know what an intention comes in, know what it's doing. Then you can observe the precepts with a sense of ease. That makes it more and more easy for the mind to settle down. Have a sense of well-being right here. So the better you get to know the mind, the more you can straighten things out inside, and the greater happiness there will be. And that happiness will spill out to other people, too, as you're less likely to be acting on unskillful intentions. In this way, the good influence of your trained mind spreads throughout you and throughout the world, all around you. So when you're meditating, it's not a selfish thing. You're not just taking yourself out. As we leave this world, we leave good things behind. That's the sign of a person who's practiced well.